Welcome to this tutorial video about Microsoft Word Basics. I'll be using an example, a cover letter for somebody who's looking for money for her business. And that will give us a basis to work with to learn different skills. In this video, we'll be seeing a number of different things. The first thing that I want to show you and that we'll use th actually throughout the video is the show hide feature that allows you to really get under the hood and have ultimate control over your document. Then after that, I'll talk to you about margins and indents and custom tab stops. These things are all sort of similar, but they're very different also. And it's good to know the difference between them and when to use each one. I'll also want to introduce you to something called non-breaking spaces and hyphens. This is a skill that not too many people know about. And you may not use it frequently, but when you want it, it's really great to have it. I'll also want to show you how to insert tables into a document. And I want to go over the basics of bullets and numbered lists. They're pretty easy, and you may know a lot about them already. But just to be sure that you have full control, I want to take a look at those. I also am going to talk to you about the difference between manual and automatic page breaks. Some of you may already know about this, but there are also other people who don't know the difference between these two kinds of page breaks. And what I find is that with people who don't know the difference, they tend to do a lot of messy work using their enter key too many times. And then finally, I'd like to show you how Microsoft Word can automatically create envelopes for you. So let's dive in and take a look. Here I have a document that is a basic cover letter from someone who has a new business and she's looking for support from a bank. So it's a cover letter to a request for money. Um, just point out different parts of the screen. I'm sure that you are pretty familiar with Word already in terms of where things are located. But I just want to remind you that at the top of the screen, we have what's called the ribbon. And then above that, we have what's called the Quick Access Toolbar. I have a lot of things on my Quick Access Toolbar. But most of you have, by default, a Save command, an Undo command, and a Redo command. Those three things come automatically. I am working in Microsoft Word 2016. Microsoft has a tendency to update the software pretty frequently. So things can shift and change a little bit in terms of how they look. But the basics should be the same from one version to the next. Now, something that I'm not showing on my screen here but I want to have is my horizontal ruler line. And that's going to become important for all the things that I'm going to teach you today. So in order to see it, I'm going to click the View tab on the menu, excuse me, on the ruler. And then over here, I'm going to tell Word that I want to see my ruler line. And I'll click that. And my horizontal ruler shows up here. My vertical ruler shows up over on the left side. Most people don't pay too much attention to the vertical ruler. And we're not going to deal with it today. But the horizontal ruler comes in very handy when you need to know certain skills. Now, the first thing that I promised to teach you was the Show Hide button. Show Hide shows you all non-printing keystrokes. So that would be tapping your space bar, pressing your Enter key, hitting your Tab key. Those are all things that have an effect on your document. They're important keystrokes, but they don't take up any ink. They don't print. Non-printing keystrokes are made visible by this button right here. So I'm in the paragraph group on my home tab of the ribbon. And in the upper right corner of that group, there's a button that looks like a backward P. And if I point without clicking on it, its name appears. It's called the Show Hide button. If I click on that one time, you'll see that all the things that I have typed but that don't actually show when I print are suddenly visible. Let me zoom in here so you can really see it clearly. For instance, right here, I press my Enter key there. Here's another time I press my Enter key, and another time, and another time. That may seem obvious to you, but there are some times when your text will wrap and you don't press your Enter key. For instance, down here in the first paragraph, notice that all this text wraps when it gets to the right side of the page, and I haven't pressed my Enter key until the end of the paragraph. As a matter of fact, pressing your Enter key to a computer is the definition of creating a paragraph. Every time you press Enter, 
you have created a paragraph. So for instance here, these are three paragraphs to Microsoft Word. To you, they may just be blank spaces, but to Word, those are actually three paragraphs. Notice these little dots in between each word? That's every time I tap my space bar. Let me click here and show you something else. If I hit the tab key on my keyboard, do you see that arrow there? That's an indication that I have hit my tab key. And it's an important thing to understand when you're trying to unravel problems in the way a document is laid out. Sometimes you might inherit a document from a coworker, and it might feel like sort of a mess to you. If that's the case, then you want to see how they created that mess. And the way the one of the best tools to help you with that is this show hide button. I'm going to turn it off though because it also it's not really a fun way to work. You don't necessarily want to type your document with that turned on. But it's very easy to turn it on or turn it off as you need it. It's like a light switch. It's either on or it's off. OK, so let's talk about the difference between indents and margins and something called custom tab stops. I'll talk in terms of this first paragraph here. If I click down in this first paragraph, it is left justified against the left margin. So the left margin is where this gray area is up here on my horizontal ruler. That represents the left margin. My right margin is represented by this gray area here on the right side. Now, if I want to, I can change the way this text sits against the margin. But I'll do it not by changing the margin. I don't want to change the margin necessarily. I just want to change the way the text sits against the margin. One way to control that is with indents. So up here on the horizontal ruler, I have three handles over on the left-hand side. If I point without clicking, their name appears. The top one is called a first line indent. This middle one is called a hang, oops, that's too low, there we go. The middle one is called a hanging indent. And then the bottom one is a full left indent. So let's see what effect they will have. If I point at that first one, the first line indent, and drag it in a half an inch, I've just indented this paragraph on the first line only, and that changes the way it sits against the margin. It has not changed the margin. Notice the margin's still over here. It changes changes the way the text sits in relation to the margin. Let me click my undo button, send that indent back to the left. Now this time I'm going to grab that middle of the three buttons. There we go, hanging indent, and I'll drag it it over a half an inch. What this does is it indents everything except the first line. The first line is left flush against the left margin, but the rest of the paragraph is moved over. And this is, again, not changing the margin, but changing the way the text sits in relationship to the margin. These are not used very often, except in um, works cited or bibliographies. You're apt to see them. That's the most common place to see them. Sometimes there are magazines that will use them as sort of a caption under an image or something. It's not um, a setting that you'll use very often in the documents that you type. But it's good to know how to do it if you need it. I'll click Undo again. Now this last one here, the bottom one, the full left indent, if I drag that over, the entire left side of the margin moves over. Now again, I, excuse me, I misspoke. That's not right. The margin doesn't move over. The text in relation to the margin moves over. That margin is still set at one inch here. But what I did was I moved my text over. I'll click Undo here. Now, if I want to control my, ar my margins, there are a number of different ways to do it. You could do dragging and dropping with this gray area up here, but there are also built-in margin tools. If I click the Layout tab on my ribbon, the far leftmost button is, is the Margin button. And if I click on that, I can work with different settings. For instance, if I want to go to more text on a page, if I don't want my margin so wide, I can click on Narrow Margins, and bam, all of a sudden I've got a lot more room on the page. But frankly, for this particular letter, I don't like that so much. 
But just be aware that you can go with a lot of different margin settings. Moderate is not quite so much. It's a little bit, a little bit back towards normal, but not completely towards normal. Or I can hit this button again. I can make custom margins. I can set them to any sizes that I want, depending on what the needs are for my document. But I think for our purposes right now, I'm going to click on margins and go back to the normal setting. Notice it tells you that the normal setting in this version of Word is one inch at the left, the right, and the top, and the bottom. Earlier versions of Word had different settings. I believe it was an inch at the top and the bottom and an inch and a quarter on the right and the left. And that changed, boy, I don't remember what version changed it, but it, now in 2016, it's one inch all the way around. Now, one other thing that I've mentioned here is something called custom tab stops. For instance, if I click in this blank space here and I hit my tab key one time, up, notice that it jumped over to the three and a half inch mark. That's probably not what you expected. It's obviously not what I expected either. I kind of surprised myself. But that happened because I had set something called a custom tab stop. You see this L up here? That is a left-aligned custom tab stop. So when I clicked in that line, let me turn on my show hide button. When I clicked in this middle line here and hit my tab key, do you see the arrow? I only had to hit my tab key one time to jump to this spot because I had created a custom tab stop. As opposed to up here where there is no custom tab stop, if I want to get over there, I have to hit tab, 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 tab. So if I want to avoid having to hit my tab key a lot of times, I can create a custom tab stop by simply pointing where I want it to be and clicking one time on the horizontal ruler. Do you see that right there? That is a left-aligned custom tab stop. Now my cursor is still flashing here on that top line. If I hit my tab key now, it jumps over to that point. This can be extremely handy if you're wanting to, especially if you're doing something like a table of contents and you don't want to insert a table of contents, which is another option, but if you want to do a lineup of some text and you don't want to have to hit your tab key a jillion times to get to a certain place, you can create a custom tab stop in this manner. Watch what happens if I press my enter key right now. I come down to the next line and that custom tab stop is there now on this new line because when I press my enter key here, it brought it down to this line. But notice here, it goes away. So when you press your enter key at the end of a paragraph where you have a special setting, the setting will be carried forward with you. But if you create a setting in a document that already exists, then it will only exist, that setting will only be applied in the area where your cursor is flashing, unless you do something like select the whole document and then make the setting. But you need to be a little careful about that. I am going to get rid of this extra line because I don't want it, so I'll click there and hit the delete key on my keyboard. And this is an excess keystroke here. I don't really need it because I've already shown you what this custom tab stop will do. So I'm going to back it out by hitting my backspace key here. Here, maybe I'll put in today's date, just so you can see why maybe I would want to tab over that way. And today is March 28th, 2020. OK, so there I have used my custom tab stop to place a date. And I will turn off my show hide button because it gets ugly to look at after a while. But perhaps I would also like to tab these items over to be in line with this. Now at the moment, look down here. When I click on these lines, there is no custom tab stop up there. But if I would like these three lines to line up with this date, I can simply highlight the three lines then I can click on the area where I would like my custom tab stop. And now I can hit tab in front of sincerely. That was my dog. Sorry for the sound. 
I can hit tab in front of the person's name. Whoops, my dog distracted me. I can hit tab in front of the person's name. And then again, I'll click my cursor here. So my cursor is flashing here. And I'll hit tab in front of the final signature line. So now on these lines, on this line and these lines down here, I have this custom tab stop. It doesn't exist in this basic area because I didn't highlight that when I set the tab stop. So controlling your margins, controlling indents, and setting custom tab stops are three different ways of controlling where your text sits in relation to the side of the document. And you just need to figure out which one is best in which situation. Now the next thing I would like to talk to you about is something called non-breaking spaces or hyphens. So here I have my really the basic uh, paragraph of my document. And in the document, I see that I have the name of my business, Animal Adoptions, is here, but it's, it's broken at the end of this first line because Word wrapped it. Um, and you're familiar with that. Word, when you're typing and you get to the, to the right edge of, of a page, Word will automatically wrap for you down to the next line. But maybe we've decided, or the boss of this business, or um, yourself if you're the boss, you've decided that you want the name of the business to never break. You want the name of the business to always be complete. And so this is not satisfactory to you. I'm going to turn on show hide again here. So what I have here is I have a regular tap on my spacebar right there. That dot right there, let me, let me again zoom in a little bit. So this dot right here, that's where I tapped my spacebar between the word animal and the word adoptions. I want to replace that with a non-breaking space. So I will delete that space. Notice that what that did was it moved the word animal down to the next line because there was not room for it up here. But now these two words are scrunched together, and that's not appropriate either. I need a space between those two words, but I want a non-breaking space. And the way I will do that is I will hold down my Shift key, then I will hold down my Control key, and then I'll tap my space bar one time. And notice what happens when I do that. A space gets inserted, but it's not the space, it's not this normal kind of space. It's a different kind of a space. It's a non-breaking space. If I turn off my Show Hide button, that looks pretty normal. You, don't, you can't tell that I used a different keystroke there. When I print this out and send this to the banker who I'm asking money from, that banker won't know that I did anything different here. But I'll know that I made some, a special effort to keep those two words together. I also mentioned to you then in addition to non-breaking spaces, there's something called a non-breaking hyphen. Now, this particular business name doesn't actually have a hyphen, but still, let me show you how I would do that. I will click here. I'll use backspace to get rid of the non-breaking space. And now I'll do my shift key held down, my control key held down. They're both being pressed down. And I'll tap a hyphen one time. And that gives me a non-breaking hyphen so that the hyphen would not break at the end of the line. That's not really what I want for my final product on this document, though, so I will delete that and do Shift, Control, Space. And now I have a non-breaking space in my document. It's a good thing to know, and it's something that a lot of people don't even know that that exists. But in the right circumstances, it may not be something you use often, but in the right circumstances, you'll be really glad that you know about it. OK, let's insert a table into this document. Um, the woman is writing, here are times when you can come visit, can come view our facility. So I'll click at the end of that sentence where she has a colon, and I'll press Enter two times, because I want to create an extra space. I'm about to insert an object into my document, and I want some extra space for it. I think I'll also zoom out just a little bit so I can see a little bit more of my document. For this, I'm going to click on the Insert tab of the ribbon. 
And right underneath the Insert tab, there's a button for inserting tables. So I will click on that button. When I click on that button, I get a palette that allows me to determine how big a table I can insert. Look what happens as I move my mouse around this palette. I get a preview down in the document of different table sizes. And all I really need is two columns. I'll need more than two rows, but it's OK. I can start with two rows. So I'm going to start off with two rows and two columns. So I will do that by clicking on this one, two, three, fourth button right here. I'll click on that, and now I have a table inserted into my document, but it's empty. So I'll need to type some, con some content into this table. So I'll say day of week. And to get to the next box, I do not press my Enter key. If I press Enter right now, look what happens. It creates a new paragraph inside that same box that I'm in. I don't want that, so I'm going to backspace that out. And instead, I will tap my Tab key one time, and that jumps me over to the next box in the row. And I will say Hours. So the first column is the day of the week. The second column is the hours that they're open. Hours, well, I'm going to say of operation, or hours of visiting. Actually, why don't I say visiting hours? That would be better. Visiting hours. Now I will hit my Tab key again, and look how that brings me down to the next box on the next row. So now I'm ready to start typing some of my actual data. So I will say Monday through Thursday. And I will say maybe we're open for visits from 10 o'clock through 6 o'clock. Then I'll hit my tab key again. And I'll say Fridays, Friday. Uh, maybe we're open from 10 o'clock through 5 o'clock. And then maybe I'll say Saturday. Maybe we're open from 11 o'clock through 5 clock, and then finally Sundays, we're closed. So I was able to type in my content and go from one box to the next by using my tab key. If I'd like to go backwards, I can hold down my shift key and hit tab. And notice how shift tab will take me backwards, whereas hitting my tab key takes me forward. That's important to know. Now, one thing I'm noticing is that I think I might like to have a top row here. Maybe I would like a title to this table. So I just started typing data right away, but maybe I would like to have some kind of a title to this table above where it says day of week and visiting hours. So while I am here in the table, with my cursor flashing in this what is currently the top row, Notice that I have a new tab on my ribbon up here. And it's called Table Tools. And on my Table Tools tab, I have a Design tab and a Layout tab. I will click on Layout. And when I, I'm in the Layout tab for Table Tools, I'll come over here to the Rows and Columns group. And in here, I, have, I can delete things. I can insert things. I can insert above, insert below, insert left, insert right. That's all whether I want to insert rows, columns, whatever. What I want to do is I want to insert a row above where my cursor is currently flashing. So I'll click Insert Above, and bam, I've got a new row. Now here, I would like to have one title center aligned within this row. And at the moment, this row is broken into two boxes or two cells. I would like to merge those cells. So while my highlight is highlighting both of those cells, I will click this button. I'm still on the Layout tab of the Table Tools area. I'll click Merge Cells, and that turned that into one cell. So now I have a single cell here. And I can say Animal Adoptions Visiting Hours. Sorry. I'm a messy typer sometimes. And I will center align that within the cell. I'll click my Home tab, and I'll click my Center Align button. And that center aligned 
that text within the cell. It had no effect on the other text in the table. It only affected where my cursor was currently flashing. This is pretty good. The nice thing about tables is they're very tidy. They help you make lists look easy to follow. Uh, they, show, they, they give a lot of clarity to what you're trying to say. Another thing that I would like to do is maybe add some color. So in the table tools area, I will go to the design tab. And here in the table styles area, there's a lot to choose from. There are many different styles to choose from. The preview is a little bit obscured because the palette itself is so big. But I'm going to go with the blue here. I'm a big fan of blue. And when I click on blue, that makes it look a lot prettier. It makes it look a lot nicer. Another thing I would like to do, though, is that this table is actually too big. It's way bigger than it needs to be for the text that's inside it. So I would like to condense this table so it only takes up the room on the page that it needs to take up. In order to do this next command, I am going to select the whole table. Do you see this box up here with the little arrows in it? If I click on that box, I've just actually selected the entire table. And now the next thing I want to do is click the Layout tab in the Table Tools area. And right sort of in the center here, there's a button called the Auto Fit button. And if I click that down arrow, I can auto fit to the contents of the table. I can auto fit to the size of my window, which is way too big for me. Or I can determine a fixed column width. I want to go, though, to auto fit to contents. I want the computer to figure out how much room do I need for what I've typed. I don't want to have to fuss with figuring that out myself. I'll just tell Word to do it. So I'll click on Auto Fit Contents. And now my table is not so oversized. Now my table is just the right size that it needs to be for the content that I've typed. Maybe one last thing I'd like to do is I would like to center align this table on the page. So I can do that a number of different ways. There are some buttons over here where I can do that. But I would like to just go back to my familiar buttons on my home tab and the paragraph group, and I'll say center this on the page. And it centers the whole table onto the page. That's different than the way we use that command up here. When I was up here in the title on the top, it only centered that text. So watch this. For instance, if I click here and my cursor is flashing a day of week, if I click that center button, it's only going to center align that text within that cell because that's what I had selected. I'll click on do. When I want to center align the table itself, not the text within the table, but the table itself, I have to make sure to have clicked this button here first. And then when I issue the center command, it acts upon the entire table, but not the contents. Does that make sense? Good. OK. The next thing I want to talk about is bullets and numbering. For instance, right here, I have a list of things. Here are some of the benefits we bring to the community. Rescuing feral dogs and cats, neuter spay, education on animal care, community education on abuse laws. If you have text you've already typed and you realize that it would look tidier if you had numbers or bullets on it, you can simply highlight that text that's already been typed. Then on your home tab of the ribbon, in the paragraph group, there's a button command right here, or bullets, actually, a bullet command. I'll click on that, and bingo, it immediately applies bullets to what I've typed. I can change the style of the bullets. If I click this little option button right here on the right side of that button, there is a down pointing arrow. And if I click on that, I can change the style. I can pick something that I think might look nicer. Maybe I like this one better. So I'll click on that. And now I have these kinds of bullets applied to my list. If I decide that I would like to indent something, I can click on that particular line, hit my tab key. Sorry. I can click on that particular line, 
and I can come up here and I can click on increase indent and it indents it within the same line. I could indent it further if I wanted to. Each time you indent, it changes the style of the bullet somewhat. I will outdent that though because I don't really need to indent that particular item. Um, if I want to, I could turn this all into numbers. I highlight those items and come up to the same area on the Home tab and the Paragraph group. Instead of the Bullet button, I can click on the Numbering button, and now I have numbers where I had bullets before. Again, just as with bullets, there are many different styles of numbers. You can pick a, from a lot of different styles. But I'm going to stay with the basic style, so I'll hit Escape here to get out of that menu. And here, if you want to indent, again, I would come up. I would come up here to increase indent, and I'll click increase indent here. And notice that my number turned to a bullet. Now you can change that again with the style of the numbering that you choose in terms of what it looks like when you indent it. I will outdent that. I don't need it to be indented. One other thing I want to show you here, I'll click at the end of the last item in the list, and let's say I have a fifth thing. I want to press my Enter key here, and why don't we say also that another thing that we do is we train dogs for therapy visits. So we make dogs uh, certified to be therapy animals. So that's a fifth item on my list. Now watch what happens when I press my Enter key. It assumes that I want to continue the list, but maybe I don't. Maybe that's the end of my list. I could keep typing if I have more items, but maybe I feel like I'm done. So we want to get rid of that number six, and we also want to get our flashing cursor over to the margin. So I will hit my Backspace key one time, and when I hit my backspace key, that deletes the number six, but it hasn't moved the cursor over towards the margin yet. I'll hit backspace another time, and it moves my cursor to where the number six was showing, but I'm still not far enough to the left. I'm not really where I need to be in order to start typing a whole new paragraph that's separate from this list. I'll put, I'll press the backspace key on my keyboard one more time, and that puts my cursor in a place where it belongs if I want to start typing a new paragraph. So then I might press my Enter key one time, and I might type here, I certainly hope that one of these times will work for your schedule. Okay, so now I was able to very tidily move my cursor back over here. And I did it without having any extraneous keystrokes after the list. Something else I would like to talk about, and I'm going to zoom out on my document here. So I will go to view, and I'll view one page. So here I am looking at a single page. And for a minute here, let's just use our imaginations. But maybe I feel like I need to have my cover letter end right here, where my cursor is flashing, so that I, for some reason, want all this text to appear at the top of the second page. And I feel like it's important for me to have this be the, la that this should be the last sentence of my first page. Well, I would like to show you how to control that by using an, a manual page break. Now, anybody who doesn't know about manual page breaks would do this. They would go enter, 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 enter. And then if I go to view multiple pages, and I will turn on my show hide key, you'll see that I achieved that by pressing enter, 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 enter over here until I forced all this text onto a second page. Now, that might have achieved what I thought I wanted in terms of moving this text over to page two. But now, if I need to insert something here, anything that I put in here, notice that it's 
pushing everything down over here so that this text is not sitting nice and neatly at the top of page two. Because as I insert more content over here, it pushes all of this down over here. And it's because of all these taps on the space bar. That's all content. And it moves things forward. So if I would like this to sit at the top of page two and then have the ability to insert more content over here, let me show you the best way to do that. Instead of pressing my, en my undo button, I'm just going to delete all those taps on the space bar. So now I'm back to the way the document was before I started moving this text over. What I'll do is press enter one time, and that moved it down once. And then on this blank line right here, I'm going to insert a manual page break. And the easiest way to do that is to hold down your enter key, uh, excuse me, hold down your control key and tap enter. And control enter inserts a manual page break. And with my show hide button turned on, I can see that manual page break right here. That tells me that I did not press my enter key a jillion times. I just press my enter key one time to give myself a blank line below this paragraph. And then I pressed control enter to move this text over to the top of the next page. Now, if I want to insert perhaps maybe an image, maybe a picture of a dog, maybe I have another table I'd like to put in, maybe I need another bulleted list, maybe I need a, something that I know will fit right here, but I want this to be at the top of the second page, a manual page break gives me the best chance of achieving that. So be aware that when you're typing in Microsoft Word and you get to the bottom of a page, I think you all know that as you type at the bottom of a page, you just, by nature, spill over to the top of the next page as you keep typing. But if you need to force something to the top of the next page, use a manual page break to do that. Do not just press your Enter key a whole lot of times because all those taps on your Enter key can kind of get in the way of other things that you might like to do later on. I am going to delete this manual page break. I'll click just so that my cursor is flashing. Let me move this over so you can see really clearly what I'm doing. I have my cursor flashing right here. And I will use my delete key. If I wanted to use backspace, I would, I would put my cursor there. Backspace deletes to the left. Delete deletes to the right. I'll use my delete key to delete that page break and maybe hit delete a couple more times to get my document all onto one page. So we've gone through a lot of things here that I wanted to show you. The next thing I'd like to show you, the last thing I'd like to show you, is how to create an envelope. So I will go and click on mailings. That's a mailings tab on my ribbon. And all the way over to the left, I have a button called envelopes. I will click on that. And notice that Word is a pretty smart cookie. Word immediately determined that this is the recipient. And notice it knows me because I'm working on my computer in my home office. So this knows my home address. You need to be careful about that because it will print an envelope with whatever it's showing me here. I'm going to pretend that that's fine with me, but make sure to check it because maybe you don't want, maybe you need to change the address, in which case you can just type over this. But it automatically picked up the recipient address. Sorry, I should stop clicking my mouse. It automatically picked up the recipient address from right here. And it automatically put in my name and address from what it knows about me on my computer. Now let me give you um, a warning here. Do not click print unless you are first sure that you have an envelope ready to go in your printer. This is really important. Otherwise, it's going to print out on a piece of paper, or it might even jam your printer. So be very careful if you're going to do this. But for the moment, we can just say Add to Document. So I'll click on Add to Document. And now I have an envelope that was created 
as a separate page in my document. Notice down here, it now says that I have, I'm have i on page one of two. So at the moment, I'm on page one, and I'm on my envelope. And over here is page two. And now I'm on page two of two. When I highlight here, I'm on page one of two. So the envelope has become page one of my document. And I can save this and open it up at a later time when I'm ready to print. Or I could go and print right now. You need to learn to make sure that you're controlling your printer correctly. If I was doing this at home, I would probably print one page at a time. I would make sure that my envelope is ready and print just the envelope. And then I would make sure that I've got the right kind of paper I want for my document and print the second page or any remaining pages on plain paper or the appropriate paper. So this is a lot of information. It's kind of a long tutorial. But I hope that you've been able to follow through with things. Certainly, you can pause. You can back up. You can take notes. You can watch this as often as you want. But these are all skills that are really good to have if you want to go get a job or if you have a job and you want to make sure that you're doing a good professional uh, job at your job. <laughs> and make sure to practice. Practice makes all the difference in the world. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something new. Take care.